Hi there, good morning, happy Wednesday. My name is John Tracy, and I'm looking forward to another opportunity to share some midweek morning encouragement with you here at the start of another day. In the book of Acts, chapter 27, we read about really an amazing account in the life of the Apostle Paul. He's a prisoner, he's been taken on board of a transport ship that is sailing from Crete to Rome. And while they're en route, this ship uh, comes into a massive storm. And it says in Acts 27, verse 14, a tempestuous wind called the Northeaster struck down from the land. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. So can you see him out there just being tossed to and fro in this massive storm, ship totally out of control like a rag doll. And in verse 18, Paul says, we were violently storm tossed. In verse 19, it says that after three whole days of this, the crew threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Verse 20, neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest lay on us. And get this, Paul says, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. They gave up hope. They thought they were for sure going to sink down into those dark waters and die. But then I want you to listen to what he says next. In verse 21, since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. He's like, you know, if you would have just listened to what I said, we wouldn't be out here in this awful predicament right now. This whole situation should have never happened. I shouldn't be on this ship right now, and none of us had to be in the middle of this storm. But in spite of all that, he says in verse 22, Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. What a crazy experience that must have been. And I think there's a lot we could talk about there, but I just want to encourage you with one like big idea that stands out to me in that story. Think about this. Can you see Paul there on the ship? He doesn't believe that he rightfully belongs to be there. He's been taken prisoner of a, uh, for a crime that he didn't commit. We don't have time to go read about that, but he's been accused of things he didn't do. And when I listen to his words, I hear two things jump out simultaneously. I hear frustration in his voice and I see faith. He's like, this didn't have to happen. We should not be here right now. But right when Paul was in the middle of what seemed like a colossal mistake, that is precisely when he experiences an unbelievable miracle by God. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but isn't it interesting how often those two things seem to go together hand in hand in life? Mistakes and miracles. Faith that is born out of frustration. I love how God deals with Paul there on the deck of that storm-tossed ship. He's like standing out there in the middle of that raging storm. And what does God do? He sends his angel and he doesn't come and really explain any reasons to Paul about why he's allowing this to happen. No reasons, just revelation. And the angel says, hey, Paul, don't be afraid. You are going to survive this. And so is everybody else that's with you. The Lord himself is delivering this message to you. You know what? Isn't it often true that when we're in the middle of a storm, that's, that's what we need as well? We don't necessarily need to be reminded of the reasons why it's happening. We may not know the reasons, but what we need is for somebody to come alongside and reassure us that God is with us in the storm. And so first of all, God did that for Paul. We don't have time to read about the shipwreck that happens next on this, at least at first, unknown island. But when we get to chapter 28, verse 1, Paul says this, after we were brought safely through the storm and the shipwreck, we then learned that the island was called Malta. Can you believe that? Do you know that Malta means refuge? Of course it does, right? Of course God would shipwreck his apostle on an island with the name refuge. I mean, that's just, that's just flat out awesome. See, the grace of God does not always prevent the storm. It certainly doesn't always avoid the shipwrecks in life, but the grace of God will most definitely always bring you to a place of refuge in him. But I don't want you to miss the fact that even though Malta was a place of refuge for Paul, it was also a devastating shipwreck where he was totally stuck for a season. And I wonder if you can relate with that. Is there anybody out there who has found yourself in Malta recently? Anybody in a storm or recently shipwrecked and devastated? 
anybody washed up on the shore of God's grace, but it feels a whole lot more like being stuck in the midst of some survival series? Yeah, I mean, I think we all have to go through Malta at some point in our lives where we're washed up on the sand in God's refuge of grace, but it, it doesn't really feel like an island vacation, right? Maybe you've been in Malta a short time, or maybe it's been for a very long season of your life, but who hasn't ever felt like they've crashed in life and gotten stuck in Malta? I mean, I certainly have, but here's the thing. It's at this point in the story that Paul has a very, very important decision to make. Will he sit there licking his wounds in misery in Malta and get angry and bitter about his life? Or will he get up and stay on mission even while he's in that forsaken place? Does that make sense? He didn't get a choice about the storm. He didn't get to choose whether or not to be shipwrecked or about being stuck in Malta, but he did have to choose whether his response would be one of misery or mission. And listen, friend, you have to do the same thing. What have you gone through in life or what are you going through right now that you didn't want to go through and from a human perspective, you probably shouldn't have had to go through? I want to say this to you today. It does not ultimately matter the reason why. What matters is your response to God's revelation. No matter the reasons, you're in Malta now and your experience in, in Malta is going to have a whole lot to do with how you decide to respond to what God has allowed. And please know this, the supply of God's grace that you need right now is going to be more than enough for your Malta assignment. Chapter 28 continues the story of the amazing ways that God protected Paul from a snake bite and gave him favor with the people on that island, including the chief of the island. God ultimately used Paul to heal that man and many others on the island and, and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Those island people ended up helping the ship's crew to set sail again, and eventually they did make it to Rome, where Paul was now treated entirely different than when they had originally started out on their journey. In chapter 28, verse 16, it says, When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with only one soldier who guarded him. And at the end of the chapter, we read this, He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without any hindrance at all. You see, God was right there using Paul to accomplish his purposes and advance his mission through all of that entire crazy journey. The point was the mission. The storm and the shipwreck were the means of expanding Paul's missional effectiveness in both Malta and Rome. And brothers and sisters, we must recognize that he's doing the exact same thing in our life circumstances as well. I'm not saying that he cause the pain that you're currently experiencing or, or what you, you've experienced in the past. But what I am saying is this, he has allowed those storms and he does want you to accept that he's working in and through them for your good and his glory. And the very place where you have been most injured and shipwrecked and stranded and stuck is the very place that God wants to meet you in this moment and accomplish his good purposes in your life. That shipwreck had to happen for Paul to go to Malta. And he had to go to Malta to reach those people with the gospel. And, and he had to go there to change the course of events for his reception in Rome. As bad as it hurt and as frustrating as it was, it had to happen. So can you recognize that there are hard things going on in your life as well that also have to happen? Because they are part of the strategic sovereign plan of God for your life. They have to happen, friend. And it's not important for you and me to understand all the reasons why right now. But what is important is that we respond in faith to the revealed will of God for our lives. And as we do, we can be sure that His grace will be sufficient to do and to be what He is requiring of us in our version of Malta. I hope that encourages you in your storm today. Or maybe it just better equips you to help somebody else who has recently been shipwrecked in their life. Thanks for spending these few moments with me. I'll look forward to seeing you next Wednesday again for more midweek morning encouragement. Have a great day.